The family that prays together stays together. My name is Kipkemboi Cornelius from St. Thomas Aquinas Major Seminary. Welcome to today's reflection on the transfiguration of our Lord. In the New Testament, especially in the Synoptic Gospels of the Biblical Canon, it is stipulated in the first three Gospels, that is Mark, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, especially Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 to 13, Mark chapter 9, verse 2 to 13, and Luke chapter 28, chapter 9, verses 28 to 36. These Gospels have the narration on the transfiguration, especially in these chapters mentioned. Although there might be a slight difference in mentioning of the words, the Gospels recalls that the transfiguration took place on a high mountain in the presence of three witnesses chosen by Jesus Christ. To, just to mention them as Peter, James, and John. And Jesus' face and cloth, dazzlingly white and bright, were seen changing. And Elijah and Moses were seen conversing with him. Then a cloud hovered around, and the witnesses heard a voice from heaven saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. We can only imagine the beauty that was on the site to the extent that Peter proposed that they remain there because it was so beautiful. There was so brightness that even me and you, we can just imagine. And so Peter pro proposes that they remained there, but we must not forget what the exchange between Jesus and uh, Elijah and Moses, who represent law and prophecy. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that the appearance or this event was meant to strengthen the faith of the apostles in the anticipation of passion. The ascent to the high mountain prepares for the ascent to Calvary. By allowing Peter, James, and John to behold this transfigured body, Jesus prepares them to see his death not as an humiliating end of his life, but as a manifestation of the divine glory. The wounded body will be glorified. And the Byzantine liturgy puts, puts it very beautifully that you are transfigured on the mountain and your disciples, as much as they were capable of beholding your glory, O Christ our Lord, so that when they should see you crucified, they would understand that the passion was voluntary and to proclaim and so and so and thus proclaim to the world that you truly are the splendor of the Father. And in 2002, Pope John Paul II, Saint today, added the luminous mystery to the existing joyful, glorious, and sorrowful mysteries of the Holy Rosary, which enabled the faithful to contemplate the revelation of the kingdom of God in the presence of Jesus Christ, in the person of Jesus Christ, at different moments of his life and ministry. He wrote that the mystery of light per excellence is the transfiguration traditionally believed to have taken place on Mount Tabor, where the glory of God's head shines forth from the face of Christ the Father, commanding the astonished apostle to listen to him and to prepare to experience with him the agony of the passion so as to come with him to the joy of resurrection a life transfigured by the Holy Spirit. Dear people of God, the transfiguration is not just of the past. It reminds all of us that there is glory in doing the will of the Father. Even if it entails suffering, in the end, His light will illumine the world. So, as we commemorate this event, let us come into our mind that although there might be suffering that we are undergoing, although there might be humiliation in our lives that we may be undergoing, let us remember that in the end, there will be light. Just as Jesus Christ was seen appearing, dazzling and changing his cloth and face into a dazzling white, even to us, as we undergo this humiliation and suffering, there will be the light in our future. The family that prays together 
stays together.